before launching my business, I would envision it. Like I would literally think about it every day and I would think of like this luxurious lifestyle, like how fabulous, like I can go get my matcha latte any time of the day. Like I can get out and get some sunshine. I don't have to be like closed in an office on someone else's schedule. The Gentech podcast discussing business, investing and marketing. Hey guys, welcome back to the Gen Tech Podcast, bringing you valuable discussion with top business owners. Today we have on Jen Aubrey, CEO of Jen Aubrey Aesthetics. So I'm super excited to talk to her today. And Jen, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Of course. So I really want to get into your background. I know that you do a lot. You have a lot of experience. So you are a Dallas-based medical esthetician. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about what that means? Okay, so a little bit about my background and like how I've gotten my experience. Um, I went to nursing school. I was also a medical assistant while I was in nursing school, and then I got my aesthetics license. Um, I also went to laser technician school, and so within doing all of that, I worked for a dermatologist for around eight years and a plastic surgeon for around four years. So that's how I got all of my experience in the medical field. And then I just launched my business. It will be two years in November. So with Aubrey Aesthetics, I understand it's a med spa. You also have a skin academy. And then you even have some e-commerce where you're selling products. So obviously, you know, you didn't come right out of school and, and go into this. So what like really led you to, you know, starting your own business, especially your own name? Okay, so if you want an an honest answer, um, working for physicians and basically launching their med spas and scaling it to over like a million dollars in profit a year, I was like, wow, if I'm doing this, building this for someone else, it's time for me to obviously do it for myself. Um, It's definitely a lot of work, but having that system in place and learning as I go and you know, for someone else's business really gave me the experience um, I needed to launch my own business for sure. And that's so amazing. You know, you were already helping these business owners launch their business. And how did that, you know, really help you like understand what it means to be a business owner? Well, I don't think there's one answer for that because I'm still learning as I'm going. Um, It's definitely a process. Um, you're going to wear many different hats. <laughs> um, like it's, it's, I'm, it's just constant. Like I'm learning something new every day, learning something new every week and learning like what my strengths are even more and what my weaknesses are and what I need to like outsource, like with you guys, like getting some, you know, marketing assistance and stuff like that. So what were really your interests when you were going to school that, you know, led you to become one in this field and then to a business owner? Like what skills do you think that you have that brought you to this? So I, I would say one of my strengths is like, I pay attention to detail. I can notice any little thing. So obviously for like my patients and my clients, that's really important. Um, you know, just being consistent and constantly um, educating myself on the newest technology, newest techniques, um, you know, proper skincare, and so on and so forth. Um, What else? Just challenging myself to constantly like stay on top of like everything because it's constantly changing. And you had all this background, all this experience in dermatology, plastic surgery, scar treatment, scar camouflage. So what really brought you into, you know, the aesthetic industry? And can you talk a little bit about what the aesthetic industry is? So initially I went, I started, I got my foot in the door because I wanted to do nursing. I strictly was thinking I wanted to do medical, but working for a dermatologist and like watching him do injectables and seeing, you know, a lot of like skin disorders. I started out with like medical lasers, actually. I worked on patients that had vitiligo and psoriasis. And so my heart really went out to those people because, you know, really something that bothered them. And when I found like different ways to help clear that, 
And then I was like, just learning more about like on the cosmetic side, I was like, wow, I'm really good at this. It's really easy for me. It wasn't something that I felt like I was shooting myself in the foot to try to like figure out. It was just natural. And so I was like, okay, let me kind of shift gears a little bit and focus more on that. And um, being next to a physician that went to Harvard, he was like super brilliant. And I just learned so much from him. Um, I think dermatology is a great place to start straight out of aesthetic school. Um, it will really give you a great foundation. And so thankfully, that's what I had. Would you say that this, you know, Harvard doctor was your mentor? I Yeah, he was. Whether he realizes it or not, um, he definitely was. Yeah, definitely. And what do you think the importance is of investing in your skin and your body wellness? Um, it's very important because you know, people can work, it's like the same thing, like someone can work out, but if they're eating like crap, I mean, are you really healthy? (laughs) You know, same thing for your skin. So you need to like, make sure that you're wearing like a mineral based sunscreen and not a chemical base, because actually chemical base can do more damage than than, um, not wearing sunscreen alone. So just really learning how to take proper care of your skin. Um, It really makes all the difference, especially when you do live clean. It just enhances all of that. So when you first started Jen Aubrey Aesthetics, how were you really getting your foot in the door and, you know, getting customers to come to you? What were your first steps when becoming a business owner? So I've used a lot of influencers, mostly local ones. Um, A lot of them are business owners themselves. So they understand the grind and we're kind of pouring into each other. So, you know, there's a lot of influencers out there. Not all of them are the same. You have to make sure you're looking at like um, their reach and like what their demographics are, like who their target audience is and make sure that um, it aligns with your business. Um, But that's, you know, doing so has definitely helped me on social media for sure. And with this influencer marketing, like how how do you really find the people that, you know, really resonate with your brand and your company? Like, how did you decide, like, you know, which which influencer to use, basically? Because obviously there's a lot of influencers in Texas and everywhere now. So it can be hard to figure out which one really goes with your brand damage. So that's yeah, that's very true. Um just making sure that you're staying true to who you are and not just going with someone because they have 5 million followers, you know, maybe someone has like 20,000 followers, but they're like the right age range. And, you know, they, you know, my business is more like around like holistic approach and like, like wellness based. So I try to um, work with people that have that same lifestyle and are promoting the same things within their brand. And with med spas, would you recommend, you know, other med spa owners or industries alike to use influencers? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know sometimes like with clothing brands, people have had a lot of trouble with them, but so using influencers did really work for you. And, you know, after you started using them, when did you see that client base start to come? So it does work. You just have to kind of make sure you have a contract in place because you don't want to have someone coming in and it's benefiting them more than it's benefiting you because with our services we do have disposable costs it's charging us something and it's our time that we could be utilizing with the actual pain patient so just making sure that you have like clear boundaries with them you have like a schedule in place you know stuff like that Um, But I always ask to see, um, I don't remember what it's called. I'm drawing a blank, but they can kind of send you a screenshot. Of their analytics. Of their analytics, exactly. (laughs) So you started to use these influencers and, you know, you're doing the med spa treatments. When did you start the Jen Aubrey Skin Academy? So that has been in place a little bit different so i've always done consulting for other practices because i am 
a clinical trainer with a laser company called Qterra. They're based out of California. So I've always had training going on on the back end. Um, I go into physicians' offices and train them on different laser devices for the company. And then on my own, I go into physicians' offices and train their staff. Um, say they have an esthetician quit and they have a full schedule, then I can step in and see those patients and I can train their staff if they hire someone new or someone that they already have. So that's been going on and I was just like, I have this wealth of knowledge and there's so many estheticians that get out of school and they don't really get a lot of value from school. They kind of get out and they're like, okay, what, what do I do? Where do I start? How am I going to get um, experience? Because a lot of these jobs are saying at least one year of experience. Well, how, where is that going to come from? It's not going to fall out of the sky. So I was like, okay, well, I can have a place where they can come. They can work for me. They can accrue that time with me and I can train them simultaneously. And I would agree with that with, you know, almost any profession, like you can only learn so much in school and by learning and, you know, reading, really doing it is where you learn the most. So I love that, you know, you're able to offer this academy and apprenticeship to really teach um, these estheticians all about that stuff. Yeah. And what what skills or what were your strengths that you see in yourself that really made you want to be a coach and be a trainer? Um, I think my leadership skills, I'm very calm and clear, hopefully when I'm speaking right now, but in person, I'm very um, good at explaining things and patient and showing them like visual um, examples. Um, and I think I allow them to feel comfortable because I think a, a lot of this stuff is very intimidating and can be extremely overwhelming. Um, so I just try to educate them and make them feel comfortable and listen to them as well, because if they have their own idea of what, you know, they think it is in their head and I'm not giving them the opportunity to like ask questions and, and speak that, then I don't know what they're thinking and then a lot of things can go wrong. And with the e-commerce side of your business, so what are you selling online on your website? Um, so I'm in the process, actually, of um, private labeling some of my own products or, and tools. Um, I have a light, you know, a standard light, kind of like, what is it, the Glamcore light that estheticians need, but one that we don't necessarily have to touch or move. It kind of like hovers over because when we have skincare products on our hands or on our gloves, you know, depending on what we're using, we want to, you know, keep everything as clean as possible. So um, different things like that to just kind of make your treatment smoother. And what were any challenges that you faced at the beginning of your journey with Jen Aubrey Aesthetics? Um, <laughs> Well, the month that I decided decided to launch my business is the month that we conceived our second child. So oh, wow. I was pregnant the entire first year of my business and I was sick the entire time. It was extremely difficult. And now I'm coming into my second year. My daughter just turned one. And so the second year of my business, I was like, postpartum recovering so it's been it's been crazy but it's definitely been worth it and what advice would you have to mothers that you know want to have their own business but do have that young child or are pregnant so it's definitely doable I wouldn't say that it's for the week and I don't say that to insult anyone but it's gonna take a lot you're gonna have a lot of long hours because Owning your own business, you know, you think if you work for an employer, you're working a nine to five. When you have your own business, you're working all the time, even if it's in bed on your laptop. Like if you don't have someone creating content for you yet or typing up consent forms, you're going to be working. So just being prepared for that, if that's something you can handle. And then just also make sure, making sure you have your finances in order so that you can delegate stuff you know, get help because it's definitely something that you need a team. And what were the steps that you took to really grow your team and your business? 
Um, well, it's trial and error because there's a lot of great people out there, but it's also hard to find good people that work for you as a business owner because some of those people are ambitious too and they just want to start their own businesses. So um, just being consistent and getting things done regardless if it's just me doing them. And what are some, you know, important lessons that you've really learned over your career or over these past two years owning your own business? Like, what would you tell a new business owner? That it's definitely an up and down process. Uh, yeah, an up and down process. Like, you're going to have months where you're like, oh, my gosh, this is awesome. I can do this. I'm so glad I did this. And then you're going to have other months and you're going to be like, WTF, like, what am I doing? I just this is too much. Like, should I get, should I quit? Should like, you know, give up? Should I get an actual job? Most people, if they're true entrepreneurs, that idea is not going to fly with them, but, um, it's, it's a bumpy road, but the first, I would say the first two to three years are the hardest. And after that, it's smooth sailing. And like you said, it's up and down, but what would you say are the best parts of owning your own business? Knowing that you're building something for yourself and for your children, if you're a parent or for your family or, you know, whatever it is that's important to you, that you're building something for, for you to service others, provide a service to others, and hopefully impact other people on a daily basis. And, you know, talking about your team, what do you do to, you know, create motivation for not only yourself, but the team that you work with every day? Um, just having high energy and doing things fun together. You know, I don't like the idea of like overworking people, especially if you're a creative, like you need to get outside. You need to like do something out of the office and just kind of like not think about it for a little bit, just do something that kind of lights you up and gets your creativity going. Because in my opinion, yes, I'm working all the time, but no one's intended to be like, just focused on that 24 mm seven. -hmm. And like we said, you know, you, you do it all. You're teaching in this training academy, you're a medical esthetician, and you also have your own podcast. So want to tell us a little bit more about your podcast, Females for Females. Yeah. So Females for Females is a podcast for females, obviously. I mean, anyone can listen, but we target females. Um, and it's with two of my best friends. And so we're all kind of have different backgrounds. And it's just a place where we can inspire other women, um, tell them about like our stories and like our day to day lives and how we just keep going and how we build each other up. And what is your goal for that? Like, what do you really want to teach your listeners or inspire them with? That life is going to constantly throw things at you. And it's just like, you have to make a decision every day. Like, don't let anything defeat you. Just keep going. Like, there's always going to be something. And you can literally make and create anything you want in life. You just have to, like, be positive and stay on your game. And I was looking at your website. Um, obviously, you know, you guys have the services, you have the academy. I saw that you also utilize blogs, which I think is amazing, you know, to improve SEO and, you know, get higher ranking on all the search engines. So how do you really think blogs have helped you with your website? It definitely helps, but you have to stay on top of it because like anything, if you publish it, you know, and what month are we in? August. If you publish it in June, you need to do one for July. You need to do one for August. So you can get moved down the list. Yeah, the words are there to help. Um, but you just have to stay on top of it like anything else. And how do you really utilize social media in your business? Well, first, actually, I want to ask, what social media platforms is your company on? Um, so mainly Instagram. I do have Facebook. I have a business page on Facebook. Um, I have TikTok, but that is very new. Um, and then I'm starting Pinterest because I've heard a lot of good things about Pinterest. 
Definitely. We utilize Pinterest and it's amazing, especially for your industry. It's it literally is a search engine. So that's mm -hmm. why it does so well. But yeah, I've seen you guys on Instagram. You guys do awesome on Instagram. And I want to talk about how important how important do you think it is to really utilize not only Instagram reels, but just all the Instagram updates, because I see that you do. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely easier to just post a picture, but with reels, it's more interactive. And if you're using like a song that's trending, then you're definitely going to get more exposure. So I would definitely recommend it. It's definitely something that you have to be doing. And have you seen, you know, in the past two years, I think Reels started like a year ago. Have you seen in the past two years how crucial it is for business owners to also be content creators? Yes, definitely. Definitely. And how, do you keep up with that? how do I keep up with that? Yes. Um I just I just kind of try to think of new ways and then also like when you're an artist, like you can be inspired by someone else's art, but you can still make it your own, if that makes sense. So if you focus on facials, you know, then you should look at other people's videos and be like, hey, I really like that, but I think that this would do better or this is more my style and just, you know, be creative. That's, that's what creativity is. I completely agree. I think that is the best way to really utilize real ideas in social media is, you know, watching what's on your For You page and, and what's trending and just seeing like, okay, you know, this is a fun trend. How can I make it my own? And that's what really sets you apart and will maybe make that video go viral one day because you are just you know, turning a trend into this other thing. But when do you find, you know, time in your day to day to capture content on your phone? I mean, I feel like I'm constantly doing it. If you saw my camera roll <laughs> earlier, I was trying to make a TikTok. So, mm -hmm. I mean, in between patients and between recordings with a podcast, like that's what I was doing before I jumped on with you. Um, so it's just any time that I have a few minutes and I'm feeling in like I'm in the mood. And okay. are you able to really tie in, you know, your business with your podcast also? Like, are you able to use that content? Um, that's the goal. That's what we're all aiming for. So we launched um, December, January. And we're all super busy and they're like i said they're in miami and i'm here in dallas so getting our schedules together can be tricky sometimes we've published three or four episodes um so yeah we're getting there like we have like our schedule going so yeah that's definitely coming and how important do you think it is to you know have all this content and really have like your personal brand out there because again it's called jen aubrey aesthetics and you're jen aubrey so what does your personal brand mean to you and how do you continue to build on it? So my personal brand is wellness based. I definitely, the aesthetics industry is clearly like aesthetic. So it's like superficial, but at my core, I'm not superficial. And I don't want that to be the energy within my business. I don't want anyone working for me to come across that way. I want everyone to have like peace and feel welcomed and not feel judged and like feel safe. So I would just say like more of like a wellness, holistic, safe place to address things that the patient wants to address. And what would you say is, you know, your biggest accomplishment thus far in your career? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe... Honestly, keeping my business running during COVID and having a baby, that me just being able to like keep it rocking and rolling during all that, it's definitely hard for sure. Because you did say you started the business two years ago. So that's 2020. Mm -hmm. So during COVID, like how, how, how did you navigate that, you know, when times were... Um, so that's where I, it, I come back to like learning as you go. 
because I knew I wanted to do it and it wasn't the perfect time. But I'm like, you know what? There's never going to be a perfect time. I shouldn't wait until X, Y, and Z happens or aligns. So I was like, okay, well, I have my finances in order. Let me just put myself out there and do it. And I did. And I started out really small. Um, and now I'm in a much larger building. So it's baby steps. I'm definitely not where I want to be. My vision is very big. Um, so for now, I'm just very blessed and grateful that I still, that I'm making it. I love that because I completely agree. Like, obviously it's a global pandemic, but there's still just like never a perfect time to start anything. And if anything, that's when you have the most time to really work on yourself and, and work on your passion and your idea. So even though, you know, it might not have been the best time it worked out because you still have your business and you know, what, what skills like have you found incredibly vital to your career when navigating through that time? So, because I did start during a very challenging time, it's kind of like, okay, if I can handle the pandemic, pregnancy and postpartum, then like, what else? Like, what else is there, you know? So I think just like being resilient, you know, just, just being resilient, honestly. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, being a business owner as is, is hard enough. So you having to go through all of those things at the same time definitely makes you strong. And now, you know, you really can like take on anything. Yeah. And like you said, you see your business going even farther. So like, where do you see yourself in five years? And where do you see Jen Aubrey aesthetics? So I'm definitely going to have a really large training academy. Um, here in Dallas, I want to open up another med spa, the same Gen Aubrey Aesthetics, in um, like a Frisco Prosper area, which is a little bit north. I wouldn't do any training out of that office. And then in Miami, my friend and I want to open a plastic surgery office. So, yeah. That's awesome. And um, with, you know, with the training, how would you say that you utilize social media and advertising to really get your training program and academy out there to, you know, your target audience? So every day, like me and my friend in Florida, we're always talking about that. Like, what can we do? Like, what should we be doing? We're always challenging ourselves to like, make sure we're consistent with that. So doing Facebook ads, doing ads on Instagram, um, and just kind of capturing, you know, your ideal client's attention. And how would you say like your training program really differentiates and stands out from your competitors? It's definitely different because I've been through every training there is offered to me just because I want to have like the proper credentials. So I've experienced them all um, and they're not very personal like it's kind of just okay you're here like we'll do the basics we'll give you what you need to like get certified but that's really it there's not a lot of like background on like skin and a lot of the reason is is because some of the instructors um, or the educators don't have the same background so I feel like because I do have a diverse background I was really blessed with that then I can offer them more information and last question i just want to ask you what's the biggest takeaway that you hope our listeners learn from this podcast um don't be discouraged if you're not where you want to be like everything's a process and um, just trust it and enjoy, enjoy it because i will say like before launching my business i would envision it like I would literally think about it every day and I would think of like this luxurious lifestyle, like how fabulous, like I can go get my matcha latte any time of the day. Like I can get out and get some sunshine. I don't have to be like closed in an office on someone else's schedule. And that sounds nice and everything, but like I never the way I pictured it isn't always how it is. And that's okay. Like there's going to be ups and downs. Don't let it deteriorate. Like 
um, from your goal. Just stay focused, put things on paper, write things down because you're kind of manifesting it. Um, make a vision board if that helps for you, if you're a visual person and talk about it to people you trust. Don't tell everyone your ideas. Don't tell everyone your plan because a lot of people don't understand or they just may not give you the best energy back, but just be excited for yourself. And if you're focused on it enough, it's going to happen. Amazing. And thank you, Jen, so much. I'm just going to kind of go through a few of the topics we talked about. So again, this is Jen Aubrey, CEO of Jen Aubrey Aesthetics, which is a med spa, a skin academy, and even an e-commerce store online. So we talked about, you know, how you used influencer marketing to first jumpstart your business and how that really worked for you. We talked about the importance of, you know, contracts for that when really trying to measure the results of your influencer. We talked about the value of experience over school and how that real hands-on experience is what makes your training academy so special and stand out from your competitors. We talked about your personal brand and how, you know, you're Jen Aubrey, you have Jen Aubrey aesthetics and how building your personal brand of skin and body wellness is extremely important to your business and just learning as you go. There's never a perfect time. So, you know, when you have this idea, manifest it, write it down and really go for it and be resilient. So, Jen, thank you so much. And where can our listeners find you online? Um, you can find my med spa page at Gentastic Skin, my personal page at Jen Aubrey, and then my academy page, JA Skin Academy. And my name is Naja Sasa, and you can find us at, at Gentech Marketing on all social media platforms. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next week.